Welcome back to Reflections on Prayer. In the last video, we talked about how sin is a barrier to personal prayer. Even though we all sin, God gives us three things that we can do before we come to him to make sure we engage him with a, a good heart. Confess, assess, and forgive. We're going to talk about another barrier to personal prayer in a moment. But before we go there, I'd like to address a question that, that may be on the backs of your minds. Well, why do we pray in the first place? The question is never addressed in Scripture. It's, it's merely assumed that we should pray. Uh, the answer to this question can get into deep theological mysteries, like God's ability to know the future or his control over all things. While those are important questions to answer, they are simply outside the scope of this series. But taking a close look at all the words translated prayer in the New Testament might point us in the right direction. Several words are translated pray, but the most common word used for prayer in the Greek is the word proskuneo, which means to petition or ask God for something. All the other words translated prayer mean to ask as well. Some of you might be wondering, what other forms of speech to God like praise and thanksgiving are called? And what about listening to God? When we use the word prayer in this series, we are generally referring to, to all of that. But when the Bible talks about prayer, it is only referring to the asking part. We're responsible for thanking, praising, and listening to God, but, but they are referred to different ways in the Bible. So if prayer means to petition God, the implication is that we need him and that he made us to be dependent upon him. We are reminded in the book of James chapter 1, verse 17, that every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Prayer has everything to do with who we are, a dependent creation, and it has everything to do with who he is, the giving Father. We'll return to this theme in a moment. Another barrier to personal prayer is our view of God and the supernatural. We live in remarkable times. Technology has given us the ability to communicate with people on the other side of the world through videos like these. Science has helped us to better understand some of the building blocks of life, such as cell life and, and DNA. And the internet has opened up a library of knowledge for people in the most remote places in the world. With knowledge like this at our fingertips, it's, it's easy to look at everything with a a demystified lens, even for Christians. Because we can categorize and classify so much in the universe, it's easy for us to do the same with God. We either put him in a box or break him up into little ideas that we don't have to experience anymore. When people hear the word holy today, they tend to think of moral superiority. And while that word holy in the Bible is related to moral purity, it is more than that. It means set apart or distinct. God is distinct and he asks us to pray with that in mind. God asks us to pray with awe and in faith. Awe is an acronym, A-W-E, that we'll be breaking down as we go. Read John chapter 14, verses 13 through 14. And take a close look at its surrounding context. What does Jesus mean when he says, ask in my name? Although a lot of Christians close their prayers by saying the expression in the name of Jesus, the meaning of that phrase is lost on many. Some attach it onto the end of their prayers almost as if it were some kind of magical formula. But to pray in the name of Jesus isn't a magical incantation. In the ancient world, a person's name was, was used to invoke their authority. When Jesus encourages us to pray in his name, he is encouraging us to pray on his authority. Why is that important in the first place? It all goes back to that word holy. God is holy, completely set apart from us and different. He's above us and beyond us. We have no right to approach him. It's like Visiting an important figure, such as the President of the United States. You can't just invite yourself into the White House and present him with your needs. But because God has granted all authority to Jesus, Jesus is our way in. 
Jesus has every right to be there, and he is inviting us to be with him before the Father. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 2, 5, For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man, Jesus. In a culture that has demystified so many things, uh, many just assume that God is our friend. Others assume the opposite. He is too far removed to hear our requests. The truth is in between. We can confidently approach a holy God with our needs because Jesus stands in between. So the first way to overcome a demystified view of prayer is to pray on the authority of Jesus because praying on the authority of Jesus reminds us that we do not have the right to approach God, but that privilege has been given to us. A in the word awe is for authority. Read James chapter 1 verse 5. In this verse, God who gives generously to all without finding fault is the the one James encourages people to pray to. When the word God is used in the New Testament, it almost always refers to the first person of the Trinity, the Father. In Matthew 5.45, Jesus describes the Father as the one who is generous to all people, causing rain and sunshine. Does it make a difference if we pray to the Father, the Son, the Spirit, or all three? Generally speaking, prayers are directed to the Father in the New Testament. Uh, There are exceptions. Stephen asks Jesus to receive his spirit and forgive his persecutors in Acts chapter 7. Uh, The apostles ask Jesus for guidance in Acts chapter 1. Paul asks Jesus to come in 1 Corinthians 16. And Jesus tells us we can ask him for anything in John chapter 14. Uh, These are important because Psalm 65 2 identifies God as the one who answers prayer. Jesus is being put in a very special place. Yet at the same time, it's important that we don't diminish the Father's role in the Trinity. He adopted the name Father not because he physically or literally fathered anyone, but because like earthly fathers in ancient times, he is our generous provider. So when we petition, generally speaking, we should pray to the Father. He is completely set apart from us in generosity. The second way to overcome a demystified view of prayer is to pray to our wonderful Father. W in the word awe is for wonderful. Read Ephesians 6.18 and Jude 20 through 21. What does it mean to pray in the Spirit? The little word in can mean a lot of things in the English language. It can be a preposition expressing a time or a situation, such as they met in 1999. It can be an adverb, such as come in. It can be an adjective, such as skinny jeans are in right now. Or it can even be a noun. Bob had an in with the CEO. It can mean a lot in the original language of the Bible, too. It can mean inside, with, or by something, just to name a few. To pray in the Spirit probably means to pray by the Spirit. In other words, those who pray by the Spirit rely on the Spirit to help them pray. Humanly speaking, prayer might appear to be the simplest of things, especially once you get a good formula down. Okay, if I pray for X, Y, and Z to the Father, and on the basis, the authority of Jesus, I should be good to go. But repetition and liturgy can take both the life and sincerity out of our prayers. Moreover, God may want to direct us in our prayer life because of his desire that we pray for certain things. If we're going to pray supernaturally, we must tap into a supernatural energy. Now, the Spirit is not an energy. He's a person. We can, he can be blasphemed. He grieves. Paul even tells us that the Holy Spirit prays for us in Romans 8. But the Holy Spirit gives us energy to pray rightly and sincerely when we rely on him. 
So the third way to overcome a demystified view of prayer is to pray by the energy of the Spirit. E in the word awe is for energy. The fourth and final way to overcome our demystified view of prayer is to pray in faith. Now, we've encountered some challenging verses on the role of faith in prayer already, so we'll wait till, a further, we'll wait till further to address the role of faith in prayer when we talk about unanswered prayer in a future video. Prayer isn't saying magic words. It's not reading a script. To pray is to partake in a supernatural conversation. So to pray rightly, we ought to pray with awe. That is, on the authority of Jesus, to our wonderful Father, and by the energy of the Spirit. Christians over time have incorporated a variety of prayer techniques to try to inject energy into their prayer life. But the Christian life starts with the transformation of the mind. And when we embrace who we're speaking to, the privilege that it is to be doing so, and the power he gives us to do it well, we can rise above the mundane. God is completely separate from us. He is high and above us. But he is a wonderful father who has not only granted access to us by Jesus, he enables us to speak in his presence by the Holy Spirit. Ask God to help you see prayer for the supernatural experience it is. See you in the next video.